here's where your shifter bolts into and the ball from your shifter sits down in here and that's your shifting rod now this see how this moves all around up and down that will cause a sloppy shift it's right inside here on a hanger there's a plastic bushing I'll show you here and what that does is the shifting tube goes from here through the tunnel and I'll open this shortly because I gotta disconnect the coupler to get the uh, transmission nose cone disconnected also you change that bushing I'll show you what I mean in a little bit but anyhow when this bushing goes bad in there the shifting tube gets sloppy so that's why most of the beetles probably mostly all of them that you've driven them when you're shifting everything feels so sloppy when that bushing is replaced in there and it's not fun to do and that coupler is replaced back there all of a sudden it feels like a newer style car where the shift is nice and tight you don't have slop in it that has to be removed through the front of the car there's a plate you remove and it slides that all the way off I mean get the tube all the way out of the tunnel and out of the car but one thing I will show you is here's what's inside the tunnel so it's not real fun to get it back in as easy as it may seem some guys tie a rope off to the end of it and when they're pulling it through they use the rope to guide it back through I've seen guys do it online and they zip them in and out and I'm wondering if they're editing some of their films because he's going through heck right now and he's been messing with them for a long time so I'll show you that in a little bit here uh, I'll do a segment on changing those bushings in there and I won't edit it so if I run into problems you'll see it but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the transmission out of here okay we're under the back seat of the car here the first thing you want to do before even getting under the car to disconnect anything with the transmission this is where your back seat sits over top of your tunnel here I already removed this screw there's a Phillips screw right there slide this out and this is the shift bushing I was talking about and that's the nose cone to your transmission right there so you want to loosen this up and pull it back slightly your shifting rod so when you do that you have to take your shifter out first because your shifter is holding you at the other end which is no big deal it's two 13 millimeter bolts and lift your shifter out of the way once you do come back here take an eight millimeter wrench and turn this out it's gonna be stubborn it's been in there for a while apparently probably blocking the view but you know how to take a bolt out just loosen that up there's what it looks like it's kind of a odd bolt put it up there so don't lose it and that's loose okay so You've pulled that coupler back and this shaft will slide right out now when you pull the transmission. So that's done. And here's the other bushings I was talking about. There's rubber bushings, camera shaking everywhere, inside of here. So you can buy this whole new coupler. And it's very easy to change and it'll tighten your shift up too. So that's disconnected inside the car okay we're at the back here now obviously my motor's out everything's out of the way so this is an opportune time to do this uh, one thing to make sure of when you are doing this there's two 13 millimeter bolts here and two here this holds your mounts on take a push on your transmission when you're doing this hopefully I'm not blocking the camera watch this mount it's broke Try not to block the camera, hopefully if not. Now, obviously this engine will be bouncing all around. These are cheap. I'll put a picture up of them. Replace these mounts. 
anytime you take this apart, if you've not changed them in a long time, just give your transmission a little shake and it'll probably be flying all over the place. So make sure you change those because if not, you're going to have a flopping motion going on. Okay, first things first, might as well do it. Here's your clutch cable here. That's the throttle cable in a way. It's just on a wing nut and it goes through, I'll put some better pictures up with this film clip, right through the tunnel to your pedal. Typically you grab a pair of channel locks, hold the other side of the cable, once you adjust your channel locks, like you need it. Just grab a hold of it and twist that wing nut off. See how fast I can do it here and I won't have to speed the film up. But I'll speed it up if I have to. Clean the threads off with some brake clean first. I just sprayed it with brake clean and it kind of cleans the threads up and mine's coming off pretty easy which it's supposed to. Okay, almost off. Alrighty. Come on. Sometimes it may pay to spend the 10 or 15 bucks and buy a new clutch cable because they do stretch. Just pull it out of the arm, throw that back on like that just so you're not looking for it later on the floor somewhere and tuck it up out of the way. Okay, we'll take a 13 millimeter socket and take these mounts off. No big deal. They're just regular little flat washers, but they do have a little bit of curve on them, like a little bit of tension, although they're probably wore out. I'll probably change those. But there you are, four knots, four washers, and this will lift off. Well, it's supposed to. I'll get it once I move the back of the transmission. The front mount's still bolted up yet. But, uh, okay, so we've disconnected the clutch cable. The four nuts for the mounts holding it down. And now we're going to move on to the CV joints, which do look pretty cruddy and dirty. So we're going to spray them with some brake clean. I'll move these nuts over. And let's do that. Try to clean them out a little bit. It don't hurt. And like I said, I got a pick tool. If there's any heavy dirt in them, just clean them out. And I just realized I gotta jack the back of the car up because I'm gonna have to be able to spin the axle. I don't think I'm gonna get the socket in there. I'll give it a try though. Okay, let's take the CB joints off. Alright, as I stated earlier, you gotta clean them all out with uh, brake clean and buy yourself the socket. I just use this tool for sentimental reasons as odd as that may sound to you. That one error that I was talking about. But take it, put it in, even if you have the socket, give it a little tap so it seats. You want it to seat in there good and I probably shouldn't now. Gonna have to do this with 3 8 ratchet. Now I see the wheel's gonna turn on me. Let's turn it back. There we go. That came loose. And I turn it back again to get it out. And they spin right out. Like I said, a nice little upgrade for these, really is to get rid of these 12 point and they sell the Allen head ones and they are really, really nice. I'm probably gonna change mine. In all honesty, just spin your wheel, put the next one in, give it a little tap to seat it. I'll speed this part of the film up so that you guys don't have to watch 
that part. Okay. Let's make sure they're pulled out and then give it a smack. And that's it. It's off. And I won't film both sides because I don't want to waste people's time. I don't like doing that. But that's your IRS axle. Good thing to do is remove them on this side all the way around. Take your axle down and clean the bearings out and everything. I'll do that in another segment if you guys really are watching me and want to see it. And repack them with grease. Make sure your boots are good while you got it apart. The boots are very inexpensive and you can refresh the system that way. So I'll take the other side apart and then I'll continue with the front mount. I'll show you what I mean. Be back. Okay, on the back of the transmission, you have a ground strap. So you can't forget to loosen that up or you're gonna have an issue trying to pull it down. It's right here. The ground strap, I'm probably blocking with my arm. Ouch, bump my head bolts to the frame so you'll want to probably replace the ground strap they're usually beat out and old so make sure you take his 13 millimeter nut loose okay take that off I'm trying my best not to block the camera okay and pull it off here and you'll see what I mean there's your ground strap and that goes up to the frame like I said unless yours is good mine's beat I can tell it's old I'm gonna replace it they're very cheap or braided lines I'm gonna go ahead and change that out so no big deal uh, and then of course we have our mount here and let me see something with clutch cable there's a bracket on the side of the transmission that holds the clutch cable let me see if I can get you up in here to see it like that and you have a bolt here and a bolt here I just covered it with my hand but you'll see what I mean okay if your clutch cable goes through here there's the end of it with the wing nut okay there's a 13 millimeter here and right here so let's take those off oh I have my headlamp between the wheel and the dolly that's smart okay the other ones I broke them loose before filming us so you just didn't have to sit there and watch it it's stupid to watch me break bolts loose and clean them up or nuts I should say and you just spin it off and there you have it pull that loose and that's what it looks like that bolts to the side of your transmission and that's your your clutch cable and that way that's out of the way but when you do that it only takes a second just give the nut a few turns back on for each one and that way you don't start losing your nuts and bolts everywhere and wondering which one went to what it's just a good thing to practice to be honest with you and I'm gonna spin that nut right back on where I took the ground cable off too and then that's on there okay so we got the clutch cable disconnected from the side of the transmission and the axles are off of both sides and one thing the last person did, which was very smart, I never see people do that. And they ran it underneath here. Here's your fuel line, okay? You should run your fuel line underneath the car with the fuel filter instead of the engine compartment. I'll do it neater later and show you. Because if you get a leak at that fuel filter, especially on plastic ones, this is a metal one I see they put on, which was good. It's gonna leak down on the ground back here, not on your hot engine. 
and you just run it along the transmission and up through. But we, that's another time I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, what we have left here is the rear transmission mount. And there's two bolts, I believe are 17 millimeter. And we're gonna loosen them. But before you do, put a jack stand underneath the transmission to the floor because the back of that transmission is gonna come down. And if you don't have much meat on your biceps, now well, some bad things can happen. So, all right, give me a second here. Okay. There is your two 19 millimeter actually bolts, I'm sorry, nuts. And when you loosen them up, that's it. The transmission's disconnected. Uh, right above this mount, right up in here, you'll see the little wire pull off. It's on a little switch. That's where your backup light switch. You'll see it. Okay, here I come. All right, so we have our just tap your socket up on her with a hammer if there's a little crap on it to get at the seat. Okay. And I'm not stuck in the socket. Okay, I'm not worried about that right now. Get the washer off. Okay. Yeah, why is it stuck? Okay, they've been on there a while. Get my big head up in there. And there it comes. Okay. And I just told Jens to pull that wire, and I didn't. Smart. It's to the backup light switch. Okay, and you'll see it. It's right up above here. It's the only wire with a male female connection. And that's the mount. It's disconnected. I'm going to reposition the camera. And I'm just looking around. This is really nasty. It definitely needs wire wheel cleaned up to look pretty again, even though I'll be the only one to see it. But it's okay. It deserves to be cleaned up. Okay. Now I'm at the back of the car. And everything is disconnected. So let me pull this out. Hopefully I don't drop it. Axles are disconnected. Check everything again. Clutch cable, reverse switch, two mirror nuts on a motor mount. These nuts are off, but it don't matter because the mounts are both bad, so it is what it is. Uh, throttle cable's out of the way. Alright, let's see if I can do this without getting hurt. Okay, pull right up. And I'm stuck. What am I stuck going on? Face. Of course, broke them up. Okay. I am hung up on something and I don't know what. Nothing on that side. There it comes. Still got my jack stand back here holding the tail end of it. <clears throat> but, and I have a wire here I missed. There we go. This transmission seems heavier than my other ones. <clears throat> okay. Sliding board. Uh, it's hanging up still. There we go. And she's out. Oops. And of course, you see the axles. I'm going to take apart cleaning grease. And hopefully they last for a while. If not, they sell new complete axles. Uh, don't buy the solid motor mounts unless you have a hefty engine that you're running. If you're just running a regular stock motor or maybe even 80, 90 horse, these stock mounts, factory mounts I should say, it gives you a nicer, pushier feel. 
when you start putting solid motor mounts in for racing, the whole body you're going to feel vibration, which is okay if you're torquing out 200 horsepower or 180 horse, which is a lot in a 1900 pound car. But stick with your stock mounts. Don't go for the height that you have to have polyurethane or whatever they are, urethane. I don't know why I said polyurethane. Got my house on my mind. And then you're going to end up with maybe a slight vibration. But uh, other than that, that's how you pull the transmission. Uh, it's not hard at all. It's not even really that time consuming, but I did already have my engine out. So it was probably for the best so you guys could see everything I was doing. I did the best I could filming it and moving it around. I hope it helped. Uh, I'm sure many of you know how to do this already. But, and like I said, pull the other side of the CB joints off. Take your axles off. See if the boots are torn anywhere. They're very cheap. Not hard to do. I'll do a segment on that because I'm going to replace mine. And Or you can buy the whole shaft set, but I think they're like... Maybe they're like a hundred bucks a piece or something, I can't remember. They're not real cheap. But you can clean all that out with brake clean, parts cleaner, pack it with new axle grease. Uh, I think they sell an axle grease for the CV joints. So you'll want to do that, but uh, then I can clean all up inside of here, make it pretty. Nobody's going to see it, but I'll feel better. Like I said, and just in case I take on wintertime rides, which I doubt I'm going to do with this car. But you never know if I get nutty one day. And that's that. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I'll start doing more when I'm working and showing you what I'm doing now. I was doing the wiring at the front, and I really didn't think there was much to see because my big head would have been in the way the whole time. And uh, wire wound the floors, I think it's not how to wire wool metal and paint it. So. Okay, so thanks for watching, and a uh, couple more days I'll be on it again doing some other stuff. Talk to you soon. Out. One more thing i got to mention to you here. i got the transmission out. Obviously, you can see how nasty it is. We're going to wire wheel that up and make it beautiful. But, and here's where your ground strap rent right here. You see the nut loose. But what I wanted to say is... If you have a 17 millimeter Allen head here, that's your fill plug for the transmission, and there's a 17 millimeter drain plug right there. Always loosen your fill plug first, because if you drain the fluid out first, and this won't come loose for any reason, and you've got your car all together, and you've had an issue, you're kind of in a situation where you can't get the fluid back in. So while this is out, obviously, I'm going to clean this all up, remove the plugs, drain the fluid, and put fresh fluid in before I put it back in. It makes it much easier. Because when it's inside the car, well, it's not very fun to fill. So always remove your fill plug first, then your drain plug. Plus, it'll drain out easier, too. But, yeah, make sure you do that, and uh, you shouldn't have an issue. And there's other things you might want to change, like this bushing you can see, or I should say seal, or whatever. It's all ripped and cracked up. And that's what seals it to the tunnel. So then you got to check to make sure this mount's good, which I believe mine is. But I'll take it out and check it. And uh, basically that's it, though. I mean, it, uh, it's not as hard as you think it is. And probably most of you know that. So... Okay, until next time, have a great weekend, guys.